former deputy president of the Senate, Ike Kweremadu, his wife Beatrice, and a doctor, Obin Naobeta, have been found guilty of facilitating the travel of a young man to Britain with a view to exploiting him. According to the London court, the three persons criminally conspired to bring the 21-year-old Lagos Street trader to London to exploit him for his kidney. Their daughter, Sonia Kuremadu, was however found not guilty. The prosecutor, Hugh Davis Casey, told the court the Kuremadus and Dr. Obeta had treated the man and other potential donors as disposable assets. It's the first verdict of its kind under the UK Modern Slavery Act. Let's now go over to London, where our correspondent, Juliana Olayinka, who's been following this case, will be bringing us an update. Hello, Juliana. Hi, Hello, Juliana. Hi, yes. uh, from the Old Bailey um, in London, where, as you just pointed out, we had a mammoth update from what I can only describe as an absolutely chaotic trial involving the former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwaramadu and three other defendants. Three of them have been convicted by the 12 men and women that make up the jury. They were all found guilty, as you said, of the first case of its kind in the United Kingdom, this modern slavery act. Uh, let's just pass our minds back, shall we? Because it has been a case that has uh, stirred two nations, Nigeria and the United Kingdom. And I can tell you, uh, we just missed uh, the, the, the pack of press that were here, all major British establishments have been following um, this pretty convoluted uh, case during the trial. So many individuals, so many names uh, were presented uh, to the jury, many of whom British citizens uh, that were in Nigeria and couldn't be traced. But this is all about Sonia Akwaramadu, the 25-year-old daughter of uh, the senator um, who has a debilitating kidney disease. She was found guilt not guilty uh, today. And in fact, uh, when uh, the jury were reading out the verdict, she wept profusely uh, when she uh, found out that she could walk freely from court. Not her daughter, not her mother, though, Beatrice Akwaramadu, uh, the 56-year-old accountant. She has been found guilty of being part of this organ harvesting plot. That was in the public domain uh, summer last year when we found out that the Aquaramadus were arrested en route back from Turkey to Heathrow Airport. Uh, we were then uh, told that um, a, a young individual who still cannot be named for legal reasons uh, was uh, plucked from the streets of Lagos by who we know was Obina Obeta. Obina Obeta has been found guilty today he was based in the United Kingdom working um, uh, under the books. I think it was reported earlier that he was a general practitioner. But now, of course, that the verdict has come in, I can give you more details about the case. Uh, this Obina Obeta, who was a significant middleman in facilitating uh, the travel and the exploitation. And unfortunately for the Ekwaramadus, we can say exploitation because they have been found guilty of these crimes under the laws of England and Wales. He was working alongside Diwe Ekwaramadu, who is still very much wanted by British police. He is in Nigeria. He is a brother of the senator, an old uh, classmate of Obina Obeta. Obina Obeta, this 50-year-old gentleman who was working in the United Kingdom illegally, um, had a kidney transplant of his own. And the kidney transplant that Obina Obeta had was donated by a friend of this alleged victim who we cannot name. And in fact, we, we no longer calling him an alleged victim. He is a victim of exploitation. And Casey Hugh Davis was successfully able to convince uh, the court, convince the jurors uh, that the senator knew exactly all along what he was doing, uh, that he used his power, he used his might, and he used his um, wealth of contacts uh, to exploit this individual, using him as a commodity. Um, so what they've been accused of and convicted of is criminally conspiring to bring this individual uh, to London. Um, he was uh, taken uh, from where he was working as a market trader 
to Abuja for tests. Uh, this victim claims he was never, ever told uh, that he was going to be donating his kidney. He was offered an opportunity to restart his life in London by Obina Obeta, who lured him into the British capital, offering an opportunity uh, for work. It was whilst um, he was here and he was brought into this country uh, by the Aquera Madus. It was whilst he was here um, that uh, he said he was basically treated like a slave. Um, he was taken into the Royal Free uh, Hospital in Hampstead where doctors were suspicious. In fact, Bukola, you know, the, the, the case is so convoluted and complex and it involves so many people, including an interpreter um, who was paid, I believe, £1,500 by the Aquera Madus to try and convince or persuade doctors that this young man knew exactly what he was doing. Of course, uh, alarm bells were raised very, very quickly, um, even though lies were told to try and convince doctors that this individual was a distant cousin of um, Sonia Aquaramadu. They didn't believe that was to be the case when this individual um, told Dr. Obina or better uh, that um, his uh, donation wasn't to be successful. Um, he said he was then treated very much like a slave. He had to run away. He spent three days homeless roaming the streets of London until he handed himself into a uh, Staines uh, police uh, station in Surrey in South London. This is still very much a developing story, although we have been covering the case over the past seven weeks. We've been in court uh, throughout uh, the trial. Unfortunately, we were not in court today. It was only Monday uh, that the judge was uh, giving his directives uh, to the jurors. Uh, the jurors retired on Tuesday. It took them less than 14 hours uh, to make um, this uh, conviction. And so it's, it, it's, it's unraveling um, as we speak. And I believe sentencing is not going to take place until May. Indeed, I was going to ask about sentencing, but now that you've clarified that, Juliana, I'd also like you to clarify this significant detail from the story. It has it that um, the Aquarium Madus and Dr. Obeta had treated the man, the unnamed, the, the individual that we cannot name, and other potential donors as disposable assets. Does this mean that there were other potential donors that were tested as well? Uh, that's absolutely right, Bukola. We can provide you that information now that they have been uh, found guilty. One of the reasons why uh, the Metropolitan Police decided to take pretty much a, a huge arsenal onto the plane when they made the arrest is that uh, they were privy to text messages. In fact, we had over two years of text messages and WhatsApp um, information read out as part of evidence in court. Uh, when they uh, realized that um, this 21-year-old um, individual wasn't going to be a suitable match uh, for Sonia, uh, they shifted their attention away from London to Turkey, where they were advised by Diwe Ekweramadu, the brother of the senator, that um, it, was, uh, it was going to be much easier and it was going to be much cheaper. Uh, so I do believe that one of the reasons why they were in Turkey just before their arrest uh, was uh, to get a donor. That is um, the allegations. And now that they have been found guilty, that is exactly what they have been um, convicted for. And just before I let you go, uh, Juliana, I, I wonder if you, you know, have been able to glean anything from what transpired in court today. I know that you have said that Sonia wept. What's her health condition, by the way? And how are the Aquarimadus, that's Mr. and Mrs. Aquarimadu, taking this verdict from the judge? Well, of course, um, it has been incredibly emotional. In fact, it's been a seven-week trial and channels television were the only African station uh, to remain um, with uh, this uh, story. It's pretty complex and chaotic. Um, the, the, the public gallery was jam-packed every single day. We were obviously seeing the two adult sons of the Aquarium Madus as well as a daughter that they um, also have, a very, very quiet family in London. But all of this information about their livelihood um, and their significant wealth uh, was put um, to the court, and it was all in display. I know that Sonia wept profusely. In fact, one of the reasons why 
um, this case dragged on for so long, which was made clear by the judge um, at the start, was because she is still undergoing dialysis um, in a hospital. Um, this disease is debilitated. And in fact, during evidence that was delivered in court, um, doctors were saying that they didn't even know if the kidney would save her. Um, during the testimonials, we also saw Beatrice Aquaramadu, uh, the, the, the mother of Sonia, you know, there were outbursts, there were tears throughout. Um, you know, her testimony was that she was doing her best to save her daughter. I think it's really important to note as well, there are a lot of questions for the Crown Prosecution Service. As we have said from the start, this is the first conviction of its type in this country of modern slavery. And, you know, it, 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 the procedure wasn't taken out. We know that this 21-year-old individual lied continuously uh, to police on several different occasions. Again, let's cast our mind back to when this story first uh, came into the public domain. What we were all reading is that this individual was a 15-year-old homeless male who had been plucked off the streets of Lagos. We know that's not true. He told police he was 15 years old. He also told uh, police that um, he had no uh, family and um, he was being treated like a slave. But the evidence does suggest that, you know, um, he was very, very close to uh, the family members, the young children of Dr. Obina or better. He seemed to have struck um, a pretty friendly relationship with Sonia Equerimadu. And there were so many pieces of his information that just did not fit together. In fact, there are also allegations that even during his three-day testimony, albeit by a virtual link, that the interpreter who was with him uh, wasn't interpreting the Igbo and the English correctly. So there are so many uh, questions um, regarding this case. I'm sure certainly that the uh, senator will be uh, filing an appeal. In fact, we may be hearing about that later. I've been speaking consistently to his lawyers and not only the hired lawyers that were um, in court, but also in the public gallery. Every day there are about five or six of his own personal lawyers uh, there, uh, you know, taking notes, making sure that all of the I's were dotted and the T's uh, were crossed. Lots of questions as well about why the senator wasn't given um, some sort of um, diplomatic immunity. I think there are questions, and I... I, I suspect that uh, we are going to have to hear from the federal government, whether it be president-elect or the president, about uh, this case and the questions that the British Crown Prosecution Service must answer. But as it stands now, you know, just uh, a couple of hours ago, uh, Beatrice Aquaramadu um, was at home with her sick daughter. That is not the case now. The 56-year-old has been found guilty. She was handcuffed and she was taken uh, down um, to the cell. So it's a, it's, it's a major, major um, a development um, in this story. And of course, you know, how long is the sentencing going to be? This is the first of its kind. We don't know. The, the senator's already been in custody for about nine months. Is this going to be a lengthy sentence um, to 10 to 12 to 15 years? We are just not uh, certain of that. There are, of course, it's possible that he could get a suspended sentence too, which would mean he wouldn't be in custody. But one of the reasons why I think the prosecution said that he shouldn't be given bail is because he is a significant uh, flight risk. Indeed, Juliana, convoluted indeed, and all fingers will be crossed till all those questions are answered and until May when you say sentencing will be. Our London correspondent, Juliana Olainka, reporting from the Old Bailey.